straight up and look out for people and dogs walking down the street. But this time she was just at the ledge. And so I was like, oh, Tucker, you got a bug? You got a bug? She looks back at me. She looks back at the, the, the ledge. And I got up and I looked and I didn't see a bug. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't see a bug, Tucker. I think you're seeing things. And then it occurred to me, I'm talking to her. I'm absolutely having a conversation with Tucker right now. And she even looked back and responded to me. Uh, well, she looked back at me, which in my mind is a response. It, 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 does that count? Yes, that counts. So we all, both of us say things to her when we leave. When I leave the house, I always say, I'll be back in just a little bit. I love you. And what do you say? You'll be a good girl. So that is our tip to her that we are leaving. And she's probably looking around now like, what, where are they going? I actually just, um, I crushed her when we were getting ready to do this. She had settled in, in underneath the chair that I'm sitting in. And I didn't know she was there. And I pulled the chair back. And I kind of smushed her a little bit. And I felt terrible and... She shook it off, though, right? She shook it off? Yeah, she's a badass. She is a super badass. So that is our um, topic of the day. And so do talk to your pet. It's very good for you to talk to your pet. That is the good news. All right, so I believe that I have finished all the news stories and topics of the day. So, Joe, I'm going to give you a pass. You are excused. I'm going to finish up with my blog post, which I don't need you for. So get on out of here. Skedaddle. Cheers. Cheers. You going to have a little bit of a beer now? Yes, I am. Was it as difficult as you thought it was going to be? Yes. Oh, was it wasn't really. <laughs> I'm not very talkative. You know that. I know. He's a man of, of very little words, but uh, we'll see if I can talk him into coming back um, for a couple of days this week. Why don't, in fact, why don't you let me know via on the um, Hopeless page whether you would like to hear another appearance by Joe or tell him to just stay in his chair. Because we can do either one, but you let us know. I would like to know what you think about that. So um, you're going to have to keep it quiet down there, little uh, sweet cheeks, so I can um, – little uh, okay, big sweet cheeks. I apologize. And I'm going to get my mic stand now, now that I don't have to share my microphone. And I am going to just go over my blog post. I'm putting my mic in my mic stand, so give me one second. Whoa. Okay, my mic is kind of all over the place, so I apologize for any problems. So today, I'm going to be talking about asking for the help that you need. I used to feel like I could never ask for help. In some weird way, I felt like that made me weak or it meant I didn't do it on my own when, honestly, who cares how you get there as long as you get there. Now, it didn't matter to me in certain aspects of my life. Now, I used to be a blonde, and I mean a platinum blonde, super blonde, like it made myself so pale. I looked terrible, and I was a blonde for a good four or five years before, well, I guess people, they tell me now, I said, said, you know, why didn't you tell me how bad I looked? And they all said, we did. Uh, I guess I didn't listen. But yeah, I look back at pictures now, and I was like, oh, that was just not the right color for me. But back then, people used to say to me all the time, Oh, look at the bottle blonde. And I would say, it doesn't matter what it takes to make you look great as long as you look great. So I started dyeing my hair blonde probably when I was about 15 or 16. So I said this from a very early age. Don't know why I couldn't carry that over to in, into other aspects of my life. But I have changed my attitude about this completely. Take as much help as you can get from anyone and everyone that you can. If they're offering the help, it means that they want to help. And if they don't really mean it and you take them up on it, shame on them. So the very best thing you can do to help yourself, your well-being, your happiness, and forging your path towards your best life is to invest in some therapy. Yes, therapy is good for so many things. It helps you to figure out who you are, what your passions are, what will take you toward the life you've always dreamed of. And don't discount it right away because of the cost. I know that it can be pricey, but many insurance plans now offer mental health as part of their regular plans. I even had a special plan for my last job specifically for mental health outside of their insurance plan because I didn't even have my insurance through my work. I had it through my husband's work. And then I got an email one day alerting me to this just a company benefit uh, that they, you know, offered mental health uh, benefits. And I jumped on it. I had been in therapy in the past. I knew how beneficial it could be. So I found a therapist from the list of doctors the plan offered, and I lucked out by getting someone I clicked with right away. Now, that's not always the case. 
My very first therapist was a great fit as well, so I got lucky right off the bat. But in between, I have had some real zingers. If you don't feel comfortable with someone right away, then move on to the next person on the list of doctors covered. There are many out there, and unlike traditional medicine, different therapists have different theories and plans of action and what they think will help you. If you don't gel with someone, then find someone you're, you feel a little bit more in line with. You will know when it feels right because it's really important to have the right person guide you through your issues, help you sort through some of these long-held feelings and beliefs that may not be serving you well. You have to be comfortable enough to open up. So once you find this person, you should see them as often as you can in the beginning. There is so much for the two of you to discover together, and you want to get started on self-discovery in your new path as quickly as possible. So if you have a limited number of sessions, which is typical, that are covered through your health plan, you will want to start spreading them out a little once you start making some breakthroughs. Some, you know, you'll get to a point where you feel like, you know, I can probably space my, my visits out a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, what happened with me, my company benefit of therapy sessions changed services after I had already started seeing my therapist, and she didn't accept the insurance of my main health plan. So what was I to do? I could find a new therapist, but I didn't really want to at that point because she knew so much about me. We had put so much time in. We were making progress. So I decided I was going to continue seeing her out of my own pocket. She charged me the reduced rate that she was getting from the insurance company, which is only fair. And I started spreading my visits out a little bit more. I would go every two weeks. I would go every three weeks. And then I would go, you know, once a month. And you have to realize, and the reason that I figured this was worth the money, is there is no better investment than your happiness. And I get it. If it's not a necessity, And money is an issue in your life. It's hard to justify. But think of it as your ticket to a better future. Try to think of it as any other bill and plan for a way to cover the cost. So I started helping, uh, paying, and I thought it was worth it. I had, you know, I would have rather spent the money on something else. Don't get me wrong. But I felt it was worth the expense and the investment to work on me. So one of the great things about therapy is that you think about what you want to discuss when your therapy session is coming up. So you take some time each week to kind of evaluate, uh, evaluate that is, what you feel, what you think you need to work on, and then kind of get a reassessment on a regular basis. It's a great way to kind of check in with yourself and then get feedback on how much you've grown and how the path to your new life is progressing. And I've even said that to my therapist before. I said, it's funny how I think so much about, you know, where I am and put, kind of put my thoughts together more so when I know I'm going to see a therapist because I know that there's things that are specifically I'm going to want to talk about where if I'm not in therapy, I don't. So I don't really do that self-check-in like I do when I'm in therapy. So it's, it's really just beneficial in that sense where it forces you to kind of check in with yourself on a more regular basis. Now, I wish it was something that we could change about the way this is covered with healthcare. I believe that the ability to talk to somebody is so good for our mental health, it should be covered automatically. But also, I don't believe in this in network crap. You know, the rela- relationship you have with your therapist, it's very intimate. I think it's very unfortunate that you may end up in a situation like mine where your sessions just all of a sudden are no longer covered. And I could have tried to continue as an out of network doctor but then it was like a whole different uh deductible and a whole different it just changed everything and I was like you know it's it's probably just going to be cheaper for me to just pay out of pocket rather than try and do the whole out of network doctor thing so I wish it was one of those things that it was you know just automatically included it wasn't so many hoops that you had to jump through to get this going Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to change that. But I do urge you of the importance of finding a good therapist and sticking with it. It is very nice to be able to speak to someone without judgment. It's nice to speak freely without fear of repercussions from what your friends or family are going to think. And it's good sometimes to just kind of get a weight off about something you may be feeling guilty about. I mean, they're not supposed to judge you. I mean, sometimes they will knock some sense into you, but they're not supposed to make you feel guilty or, or judge you. And I really can't speak about this patient-therapist relationship highly enough. I think everyone should do it for at least a little while. Even if you are completely happy and seemingly have no problems, you're right. It's always nice to have someone that may keep you accountable. 
but take the time to find the right person. It may be a pain in the butt to have to get a new referral or approval for a different doctor. Every time you find one, then you realize that's not the right one for you. You have to go through that process all over again, but I assure you, it is worth it once you find the perfect therapist for you. It makes all the difference in the world. So it is Monday morning. We know what we like about Mondays. It's a brand new week full of opportunities, and we're going to make it a fantastic week. And I hope that you make today your best day yet. Like I said, make sure to get in those comments about whether we would like my husband to continue to be a guest star this week or if we want to let him off the hook. I think he wants to be let off the hook. We'll see what you have to say. Have a great day. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Hope List, hosted by Wendy McClure. For more inspiration, please visit hopefulist.com. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow on The Hopefulist.